Okay, so eight years ago, my son and daughter, aged 10 and 12, and I have double checked those ages, did the physics A level, that's the exam for 18 year olds in the UK, uh, and they both got A grades, uh, which makes my son probably the youngest person in the world to have got an A in his physics A level in the entire history of the A level. Um, and I'd just like to explain how they did it um, so potentially you can do your physics, GCSEs or A-levels or whatever it is better. So wherever you are learning physics, even at degree actually, um, the, what, what I'm about to tell you I think could potentially help. Um, okay, so I guess the background is uh, firstly that my, uh, my kids were homeschooled back then. They just they'd started homeschooling about two years before they did their physics A-level. Um, and um, I have a degree in physics from uh, at Oxford and I'll explain why that's relevant in a second. Uh, so another really amazing thing is actually that um, both kids, both my elder daughter and uh, son, did had, had not studied any physics a year before they did their A-level. They'd never studied any physics at all, right? So put that in perspective, I started studying physics when I was about eight. I don't know exactly what age I started, but it's probably about eight. And I did my physics A-level when I was 18, right? I did get a better grade then, because I got an A grade, which is the grade that my kids got, but they could have got an A star, and I would have probably got an A star. So they, my kids didn't get the A star. Uh, there was a mess up with the way, I mean, I guess I didn't get involved enough. I'll explain that later, maybe. Yeah, I will, okay. Uh, but essentially, they did 10 years, uh, they did, uh, what, what I did in 10 years, they did in one, yeah. Now, they did it intensely. They were focusing on maths and physics and a few other subjects. And I was doing quite a few other subjects and lots of other stuff. But yeah, I mean, it does put in contrast how, um, I guess, homeschooling and, in, and studying intensively can benefit. But also, I, I want to tell you the, the, the method in which they learn. So the method uh, in which they learned was um, the same, and I, I was heavily influenced by my how I was taught at university. So at Oxford for physics, and this is probably still the case because things don't change very quickly at Oxford. So the way we were taught, and I am uh, I'm simplifying, but I'm not exaggerating. We were we were mostly taught through questions, and so um, so basically for much of the course we we would be given really difficult questions like final year level questions from the beginning of our second year right um, so we begin final year level final it's a three-year course so from the beginning of the second year we'll be given the, the questions for the following year the end of the following year um, and we would not be taught in that subject at all we might be taught later we would be taught later but the questions we would be doing would would we would have to do before we're taught Right, sounds like a crazy system. I'm not sure why they do it this way, um, but it is done this way. And I think maybe it's done deliberately. And so what you're doing is week in, week out, you're given questions, you do the questions, and how do you do them? Now you're asking, how do you do them? Well, you go, go to the library and find out. There's books, right? Nowadays, there's the internet, it makes it much, much easier. But you go to the library, find out, research, read around the subject, and then understand around the subject and then only when you understand around the subject you'll be able to answer that very specific question that you're trying to do you can't just answer the question there's no copying out from you you know the kind of questions you're getting you wouldn't find in any book anywhere right no matter how hard you look so you can't just copy out the question the answer you actually have to understand the question and then you have to understand the answer and you have to, to understand the answer you have to build your whole argument around various um, things that you need to understand so we would do that week in week out and then in the tutorial, we would then go and discuss those questions and answers in detail. And the, the tutor would tell you where you went wrong, if you couldn't do it, explain how to do it, etc. And that is how I was taught um, physics at university. So given that I had slight bias anyway, and so what we did with my, with my kids, this is, uh, we did the same thing for the GCSEs and A-levels. Uh, there were some slight differences. We kind of learned things as we, uh, as I did it once with the GCCs and it worked. I then went into the A-levels. There's one big thing, I, a mistake I made with the A-levels, which is why they didn't get A-stars. But um, they, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But that's how we, based, that's how they learned their physics. Now, so, so what I did was for both physics, for, the, for both the GCSE and, so they did their GCSE in five months. They then had a break and then they did their A-level in five months as well. 
uh, and they were mostly they were doing lots of languages at the same time. But the main study, I think, was probably physics. I think even for the, for the GCC, they actually didn't spend that much time. I, they probably spent about an hour a day and then built it up to two hours a day. And then towards the exams, they were probably doing like three, four hours a day of, um, or even more. Right? The week before or two weeks before, they would have been doing um, physics pretty much flat out. So, so what, I did, what I did was I, and this, uh, so what I did, this is the same thing that we did at university. So what we did was um, I, I, got all, I got a few sets of physics papers. Uh, GCSE papers, the papers that they were going to do, and group them, and so let's say, uh, I can't remember how many, but maybe five sets of GCSE papers, and then took out all of the questions on each topic. So I, I took out all of the electromagnetism magnetism questions, for example. I took out all of the forces questions and put them together. And then I would get them to do the um, uh, all the electromagnetism questions, for example. Now, you're saying, how, the, how are they going to do that? I haven't been taught it, right? I didn't teach them anything. Uh, how are they going to do this? Well, firstly, they had the textbook to refer to. Uh, uh, then they've got the whole of the internet, right, to, to get information from. And then they've also got the answers. All the solutions are always given, right? So they would then go through those and they'd get, they'd get stuck. Yeah, at, the, at the very beginning, they'd be absolutely stuck, right? Uh, they wouldn't know what is going on. But you'd kind of nudge them and let them, and this is one of the things that they, uh, are, you know, my, uh, my kids have learned is they, they can just, you know, they, they, can, they can pick things up themselves now, right? They know that they, they you know, they're not going to be spoon fed the information. So what they do is they do those, all the electromagnetism questions um, and they'd come to me when they get stuck. I would guide them, you know, teach them a bit, not much. Uh, and then they would uh, get better and better at those electromagnetism questions, etc and then they'd move on to the next topic, right? And once they'd got some kind of like grasp or good grasp of a topic, they'd move on to the next one. And that is essentially how they learned their, um, did their GCSEs. With their A-levels, I did change it a bit. And I don't think, I, I think it, it, they did worse relatively in their A-levels, but I think this is a good way to do it. Right at the beginning, I spent two weeks with them going through the textbook, the whole textbook in two weeks flat. And I think the benefit there is that at least they had an idea of what they needed to know and where to look. I'm not sure how much it helped. I could have just not done that for their physics A level. It's not the reason why they did relatively worse, uh, but that is uh, basically how they um, uh, how they um, did their physics A level as well. Yeah. So I just but, but the key thing is I added the going through the whole textbook. So you could do that as well. You could quickly go through the whole textbook really fast, just so they have a, f a fair idea. I guess if you're not if you don't have a background in physics, you wouldn't be able to do that with your kids. Um, but I think the, the principle here is, um, and I think this is the same, definitely the same for maths and, well, and for physics, is if you want to be good at these subjects and do well in your exams, it's a very simple method and there's only one method, only one technique that works, which is you do questions and answers. That is it. You just do questions and answers, questions and answers. That is all you need to do. Um, for some reason, well, I, I kind of know the reason, but you know, when you're doing questions um, and answers, you're really having to think, you're having to find out, your brain is kind of more curious and things stick in with you, rather than you just reading or listening to a lecture or whatever, not, not much of that sinks in. Um, there's a big difference between doing questions uh, and then kind of, or just passively, passively trying to absorb, in, uh, absorb information. So that's how we did it. And they basically, um, uh, the other thing, I guess, the other principle is that they, they did their A-level very, I mean, they did their physics and um, uh, GCC and A-level really intensely, right? So they didn't, um, they, they weren't doing lots of different subjects. They were focused on that one subject at a time. And then once your brain kind of like, um, I think that's a very, another very important principle of learning. The best way to learn is to really focus, um, which unfortunately they don't do at schools. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, I, I get asked all the time, you know, why, how can, how do you, do, how do you, um, you know, kind of like going through the details of how can you make a course structure? Look, I mean, I, d I don't think, um, I think parents, or I guess it's mostly parents, who are asking this have kind of like lost the plot, as it were. Look, when, I, when, I, when we started homeschooling our kids, we didn't have a course structure or anything to follow. We just kind of did it. But the, but the most important thing is you've got the ultimate, the eventual goal, which is questions. So if you almost start from that as the basis, you're going to do really well. If you've got that aim, you've got that aim. You know, let's say, you're going to say, okay, well, the aim right now is to get, a, I mean, if you haven't got a GCSE, the aim would be to get a physics GCSE. Well, you've got the questions and answers. Now you kind of work backwards. And yes, it takes some figuring out, but, you know, I think if you've got a, a child, for example, who's numerate and whose maths is fairly okay, 
and you gave them GCSE questions and, and they were motivated to figure them out, they would figure them out actually quite quickly, especially with the internet. I, I mean, things are so easy to figure out these days if you're motivated. That's another important point, which is, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're a parent and you're wondering why your kids can't do that well at, at physics or, um, or maths or whatever, or they're not doing so well, the chances are it's probably because they're not motivated. I mean, my kids, when we were doing it, we had a great time um, uh, learning physics. I made it fun by taking them to cafes um, and uh, teaching them. I wasn't teaching them, I was doing my work. They would do their stuff. They would be enjoying good, like, tasty drinks and whatever, and cakes and stuff. And, you know, it's just a nice atmosphere. Um, so uh, it's kind of like kids have to want to do it. I think it's almost like a, a, you look at it and I, I, I mean, once you've got this principle of questions and answers, it's almost like if a child wants to do a physics GCSE, they can do it, right? They, 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 there's nothing stopping them. There's nothing stopping them. They, sh they, they, they should go to, I mean, there's, you know, you don't need to know any, like have any structure or whatever. It's just a case of wanting to do it and then realizing you can doing it and doing it. So I think that's all I have to say um, here. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've left out. There's no, nothing special. You're probably thinking that both my son, or oh, my, oh, my, 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 my son and daughter are both physics like geniuses. My daughter is definitely not, I can tell you that. And the fact that she got an A honestly means that most people can get an A. Um, and uh, is there anything else I'd like to say? Okay, just as I'm about to post this video, I realized that I didn't mention why I believe my kids didn't get A stars. I can also explain very briefly why I said that my A grade in my physics A level um, was um, effectively better than my kids A level. Not that it matters, I'm not trying to show off here or anything. But in, when I did the A level, I could have got, the, the maximum grade I could have got was an A, an A and they then added the A star. So my kids could have got A stars and they didn't. The maximum grade I could have got an A was an A. So I, could have, I would have almost certainly got an A star had there been an A star. So that's one thing. And I think the reason why my kids didn't get um, A stars was just, uh, just because, and I think this is a, a very important management principle, maybe teaching principle, but simply I, I, I got less involved. So they did well in their uh, you know, they, I mean, my, my daughter at the time had got five A stars in her GCSEs. My son um, had got three A stars, and we kind of thought, you know, but, but at that time, I just, you know, wasn't, you know, really. I thought they were going to get A stars, and for some reason, they were they, they were marking their own papers. So at the beginning, I marked their papers, but to, you know, as they as they progressed, they started marking their own papers. I felt they were smart enough to be able to do that. I maybe, you know, I was wrong. I don't think they were being dishonest. To this day, they're saying they weren't being dishonest. But when they were doing the past papers, they were saying that they were getting A stars, and uh, they were not. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think they had bad exam days because I saw their exam papers afterwards. Because um, uh, and you know, they just didn't understand the physics principles well enough. But essentially, that was the reason why I believe they got A's, and I think they took it relatively easy towards the end. Had I been very involved with them towards the end and just made sure they were actually getting A stars or, no, sorry, they, they weren't getting A stars and then taught them the things that they weren't, uh, you know, understanding, I think they would have probably got A stars. But, you know, we were, gonna, we were thinking of retaking them afterwards, but decided not, not to. Uh, just thought, what's the point? They've kind of done well enough. Um, but, yeah, that was, that was the reason I believe they didn't get A stars, basically, because I... They, just were, they were just being super generous with their own marking, I guess, and I wasn't involved and, and didn't know about it. Okay, thank you.